What's up guys? Hello and welcome to another video. Hey, today we're going to be checking out how to add Ethernet to your Arduino projects. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, stay tuned because it's coming up right here, right now on MI's Ferry. Okay guys, so if you're tuned into this video, you want to know how to add some hardwired Ethernet to your Arduino project. Well, it's actually a lot simpler than you think. This video is probably going to be fairly short because it is it is very easy to do this. What I've got here is one of the modules. It is a W5500 module that has uh, wired Ethernet <clears throat> available on it and then it gives you a breakout header so that way you can attach uh, all the information, the data lines and everything to your Arduino Uno. It takes either five volts or three and a half or 3.3 volts, excuse me, and uh, it basically runs like a top. It is fantastic. It only uses these four pins. It uses pins 10 through 13 or at least that's what we have assigned it in software. Uh, those connect to the MISO, the MOSI, and the clock, and I think it was one more. SCS, yeah, is what it connects to. I'm going to put the uh, link to the library down below so you can see all the connections, how I made these. This is literally it. That is all that you do. So we'll go ahead and get over to the computer and throw up the uh, uh, code so that way you guys can see how to code the Arduino Uno. And then literally all you have to do is give yourselves some power and take off and you now have Ethernet attached or wired Ethernet, I should say, attached to your Arduino projects. So let's go check out the code. Okay guys, so now that we have things all plugged in and everything and ready to go, uh, it's time to look at the code for the Arduino. So we are going to be using the uh, Ethernet library. I'll pull that up for you real quick. Uh, pretty simple enough as you see the, you know, here's the connections as we usually do, but uh, it should come standard uh, with the Arduino IDE. And in fact, if you want to do some examples, here's the IDE right here, should be under examples, ethernet, and then uh, there's some examples for you. So what I've done is I've taken the web server example and I have modified it to meet our needs for what we are going to do. This is going to be uh, kind of, there'll be a few videos related to this. <clears throat> so stay tuned for that. Uh, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to be posting up now the web page that's going to pull our sensor data from, let's say, our, where I'm using, for example, the, the ADCs that are in the Arduino, just regular Arduino Uno stuff, um, and we're going to be posting that to a web page, okay? So first thing you have to do is these modules that I have, the W5500, uh, does not have its own uh, burnt-in MAC address, or at least that I know of. Now, maybe you'd have to more research, I'll find it, but <clears throat> you can basically program the MAC address. So you just need to uh, put in a MAC address that is unique on your network. Now, for instance, if you're going to use it, there's an IEEE website or something like that where you can get actual standard and register for a MAC address and all that stuff. I can't remember if it's free or if you have to buy it, but there's a whole hoopla for registering MAC addresses and things like that if you're wanting to uh, put this thing like out there for <clears throat> the World Wide Web or something like that. Um, it can get sticky. But if you're just playing with your own home network like I'm doing, you can just make up one. Just make sure that it is unique uh, to all the other devices that are on your network, and you should be good to go. So you just throw that on there. Um, and if you're like me, I have my own like little network that's off to the side that I do all this testing on. All this testing isn't on my main network. Um, it's just on a little network that's off to the side. So anyway, um, then you're going to give it an IP address. It could be anything that you want. Obviously, make sure that it doesn't conflict with any IP addresses you already have on your own network. So give it something like I just went with the default of 177 on a dot one uh, network. It's pretty easy. Now, as we come down through here, here's all the different stuff for setting it all up. Um, you can read through that if you want. Um, but here we get to the web page uh, building portion of this because this is going to be set up as a web server. So it's going to serve it up on a web page. So we need some sort of HTML formatted page or, or whatever uh, to do this. So all I'm doing is I'm creating a uh, table with some headers and stuff so that if you navigate directly to this, you'll be able to you know make sense of the data that's on there. It'll at least look pretty. Um, but basically what we're going to do is I will show you, I got saved over here on another, let's see, I gotta, I gotta pull it back up. 
give me a second. Um, I have it saved in just a text file, kind of, kind of what we are going to be doing, except I clicked on the wrong thing over here. Sorry, this is off, off screen. This is on a, on another, uh, another screen here. So what we got is we have, um, uh, an HTML, uh, file that we built and we added some tags to it and things like that. So that way we can actually navigate through the data. So that's how it's going uh, the rough skeleton of this. So that's what we're doing in the code here. You should be able to hopefully catch on to that <clears throat> um, when you're looking at the code. So basically we set up all that beginning stuff. There's the channel value. There's the sensor data there. We're setting up the headings and setting up the table. Then we get into the for loop, which is where we actually start uh, posting the data to it. So now we'll program, we would program this, upload it. However, I've already uploaded mine. This is also set to refresh. If you look up here in the code, there's this. It's set to refresh every five seconds. You can change that around uh, 30 seconds, 60 seconds, however you want to do it. But it will refresh the data every every five seconds. Let me go into a web browser here and let's just go to it. So 177. And here is our values. That's what our table looks like. And if you uh, are using Chrome and you press F12, you can see here is our main data. Now it'll refresh, <laughs> it refreshes, so it's kind of hard to, to open this all up, but there is all of our pieces, all of our components and all of our classes and all that stuff. But that's how easy it is to post your stuff to a web page that you can get to wherever. And that is pretty much it. So guys, that's gonna do it for this short, quick little video. Um, this is just gonna kind of get our feet wet with uh, posting our stuff through web page uh, using web server. Now, we can do this wirelessly. Um, let me know in uh, the comments if you wanna see the wireless version of this and I can code up some code that will uh, basically do the exact same thing but uh, do it over a wireless connection. So in any case, we'll go ahead and stop the video here. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Make sure you to like, subscribe, and share, and all that jazz. Check the links down in the description. I have posted some of the hardware for this, where to find those uh, W5500 uh, devices, as well as Arduino Uno, as well as some pre-programmed uh, Arduino Uno chips that are programmed with the bootloaders. In any case, guys, merch! merch we got all the stuff for the engineered line um we even have in fact i think i have it with me we even have masks now that's right we are living in very weird times we do have masks now that are available so you can support your engineered uh nerdism uh with a channel branded i think it's right here channel branded uh engineered mask pick your flavor we have all different colors we have all different uh, uh disciplines we got mechanical electrical uh, uh we have structural we've got i mean all the different ones that are out there plus the generic uh nerd glasses which is fantastic so definitely go get some of the some of the merch that's out there. also check out the scam away robocalls you know so give them a squeal with one of these i got these down in the description they're back in stock uh didn't have them uh earlier because they went like wildfire because these things really do work um it basically blasts the uh, internet sound you know the old fax machine sound uh into the phone so you just hold it against the phone whenever you get in a robo call and it literally tricks their system into thinking that it called a fax machine and it removes your numbers all right guys that's enough see you guys next time